Hi everyone, Stephanie with the patient story again, joined by Kimberly who just got done sharing how she got diagnosed with marginal zone lymphoma. Um, Kimberly, as you were saying, luckily it was really early, early stage, almost like stage zero yeah. <laughs> according to your doctor, um, which is what we like to hear, right? Cause that's always better. Yeah. Um, so you were, you were told you would be getting six months of chemo, one infusion per, per month essentially. Mm -hmm. um, can you describe how the doctor uh, talked about the chemo regimen, if you remember the drug names or what it was called, and also just sort of, um, you know, did you, was it all IV or did you get a pick line, a port? It was all IV. Um, I was really hoping it would be all IV just because I was going in once a, once a month um, for two days. So it wasn't, so I was just really hoping that I wouldn't have a port. And thankfully it was all IV. Granted later, um, later during, um, towards the end, it started to get difficult for them to find a vein, which started to suck more and more because it, they just had to poke more and more. Um, but yeah, so the first uh, treatment was in, February, late February, early March, I want to say. Um, that, that's a picture of my first treatment. Um, we came home that day and I just took a picture of my ID bracelet. <laughs> um, that I had treatment done in my hand because uh, that was the, I, I remember that was the first one, mm. I think. So the first day. So I'm trying to think, oh, that was a longer day. So I was pretty much at the infusion room all day. Um, and so little did I know, or maybe I just didn't hear it from my doctor that treatment was two days every month. Um, the second day being shorter than the first. Um, but my husband had the great idea of if we could switch it to the longer day being the second day so that we could, he could take the day off from work and be with me all day. And then like the first day I would just have either my dad or someone from, you know, from our family just mm. kind of sit with me for an hour. Cause the, the first day, yeah, the short day was about an hour or two. Okay. And then the long day was all day about okay. eight hours. Do you remember uh, what the drug, what the chemo regimen was called or what drugs you were taking? I don't I tried to, but I don't remember. Um, one started with an R, and the other was a B. It was pretty common the the medicine that I was that I was taking. So okay, and that, uh, that's all I remember. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. I'll double check that while we're we're talking. But um, so describe the infusion, like how you pass the day. You know, people who think of chemo. I think it sounds intimidating, you know? So yeah. uh, describe how you got through it. Um, or the first, uh, the first, the short day of chemo, um, it was fine. Um, I didn't really, I mean, there, there was, uh, I sat in the chair, they hooked me up um, and they had a, t there was like a portable TV in my, like each chair had a portable TV. So you were able to watch TV. You were able to bring your headphones, just listen to music, you know, do whatever. Um, but for the most part, whoever was with me, we just kind of chatted uh, throughout treatment just to make time go a little faster. Cause every time it was always someone different, whether it be my dad, my mother-in-law, a cousin, um, or even my husband at, the, uh, at some points, uh, we just kind of chatted away. Um, the second day of chemo, which it was a longer day it was a little uh, it was not so much tougher um just longer um before they in, uh before they started the the infusion uh they gave me benadryl which always makes me sleepy so <laughs> once the benadryl kicked in um i i was either ready to pass out or passed out already mm -hmm. um and only woken up by the blood pressure cuff uh, taking its uh, taking a reading every thirty minutes or so. Gotcha. Um, but other than that, I was usually either just watching. If I wasn't sleeping, I was uh, watching TV or whatever was downloaded onto my laptop. 
Um, this picture was taken right after, uh, right when they unhooked me from, <laughs> from everything. <laughs> so I was, I was ready to go home. And I'm, I think, I think it was snowing that day because mm. we were, we looked out the window and, I was, and, um, and my, that this infusion center was in Berkeley Heights. So it's kind of up in the mountains. So we were just like, oh, I hope we can get home. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're, you look eager there to leave. You're like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. Let's go. That, that was a full day. I think it, I think it had to have been like around five o'clock, four or five o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> let's get out of here. Let's um, go. By the way, Kimberly, I think what you had was rituximab and bendamustine. Does that yes, sound right? Yes, okay, yes, yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. And so I'm glad we got that um, settled. What do you remember the side effects um, and when they hit? Um, I don't think I had much. Um, all I I do remember one weekend. Um, I don't. Uh, I forget which session number it was, but I, it seemed that after every um, long day session, I was starving, even though they served me lunch, you know, during the middle of the day, like I didn't really eat during treatment, but when I got out of treatment, I was starving. So we would always go somewhere to hit up some fast food for me to just get something into my stomach because I was really hungry. Um, and so I was fine the day of, uh, treatment the weekend of, cause it was always, we always planned it out to be a Thursday, Friday treatment. Um, so that always on the weekend, my, like I was hungry, but I wasn't hungry. It was just the annoying kind of like, I want something, but I don't know what I want. And water is just not good enough and nothing in the kitchen is good enough, but, I do remember one weekend where I just wanted ice cream, some sort of like dairy. And my husband had a family party to go to. So I couldn't go because I just had treatment. So he went and represented for us. My parents were away that weekend. So um, no one was in the house but me. Um, so I just couldn't figure out what to eat. So I ended up making myself pancakes with whipped cream and strawberries on it. And that for some reason, it just hit the spot. And I was content for like a good few hours until I got hungry again. And I made enough for myself that it lasted, you know, throughout, throughout the day. Interesting. Um, so you were hungry, a lot hungrier than usual. But so was nausea at play at all or... Fatigue I had or... no nausea, wow. um, thankfully, no nausea. Um, just, I was just very tired the weekend of also. Um, so I just basically spent my Saturday um, watching TV and falling asleep watching TV. And then same thing on a Sunday and would go back into work Monday. Yeah, that's right. You said you were working through the entire time. So that's... Yeah. That, I mean, that's good news in terms of you were able to function. Um, it sounds like, wow, you really, yeah, side effects are pretty minimal for you. Yeah, which yeah, is great. Um, I, I got lucky. <laughs> and, and it was um, two days of infusion and was each cycle three weeks or four weeks? Uh, four weeks. Okay, so you would have, it was, it was really just two days every month. It was literally like mm -hmm. that for six months. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, that's great. Um, so actually that answers a question too, which is for, for you at least, and we can't speak for everyone, but you were able to function fine. It sounds like there was a lot of hunger. You had a couple days of fatigue, but outside of that, you felt pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I got, I got really lucky. Uh, like I said, and my, my doctor just said to, um, keep a normal schedule as possible. If I feel good, then do it. Um, he said to, cause my routine was basically going to the gym twice, three times a week, um, and going to work, you know, five days a week, unless I had chemo, which was, you know, I was off Thursday, Friday and going to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so as active as I could, he, he definitely encouraged me to be as active as I can. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I would go to the gym Tuesdays and Thursdays. Wow. Obviously, when I had treatment, I would just go Tuesdays, mm-hmm. you know, Thursdays and Saturdays, I would just kind of hang out at home and, mm-hmm. you know, everyone would just be checking in on me and seeing how I was. So okay. I got, I got lucky. <laughs> I was very <laughs> lucky. Glad to hear it. You know, minimal impact. That's, that's yeah. great news. Um, so then did you, to track the progress of how effective the chemo was, did they do a midway PET scan and then an end of treatment PET scan or how did that work? There was one midway, I remember. Um, yeah, I don't think he did an end of one. If he did, I don't remember, but I, I'm pretty sure there was one midway um, for every uh, before every treatment, they would, I would go get my blood work done or the, yeah, I would get blood work done, or at least before I saw my doctor a week after treatment, I would get blood work done just to see where all the levels were. Um, and the one level that my doctor kept looking at was my IgM. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My IgM. Um, because apparently when that first started, that was super duper high, like abnormally high. Um, and then as treatment went on, it started to get lower and lower and lower, even to the point where it was like really low. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was our, that was our indicator, whether it was working or not. And it, it was, was, it was blood tests. And that's, that's awesome news. Um, yeah. but that treat that uh, PET scan that you had undergone in the middle do you remember if it had shown anything or it was just hard to see because he was like such an early stage yeah um from what I saw there was nothing that was jumping out um he said that um when he went through it with me he goes it's working you know what we're doing is working because nothing's really jumping out he goes so he goes we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing until you know we get to the we get to the end and then we'll just kind of run another blood panel on you and see where everything is and at that point like at the end everything everything was good at the end <laughs> awesome okay. yeah so we like to hear um so yeah. okay so then on that note I mean it sounds like things were really pretty seamless this is great yeah. you know I think it's it's a it's a great it's a great story for people to be able to get some um hope I think that you can yeah. get diagnosed and 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 have minimal impact to your life um, in terms of just this physical stuff, I'm not saying it was easy by any stretch, um, but I'm going to pull up. So you did, you had IV. I wanted to ask you about that. You said at the end, it did get difficult, right? Um, was there anything that yeah. helped? Like, I know hydrating is important. Any do's or don'ts for people who are going to have to do the IV for a while? Um... For, I guess like, um, I guess a port, I, like in hindsight, a port probably would have helped me even if it was only like once a month. Um, Cause getting blood work done now is a task and a half because <laughs> apparently like one, yeah, see that is my, in this picture, that's my left arm that they're, um, that I'm getting infused in. The only vein that they can find now is my right arm and it's in one spot and with me being pregnant now blood work is pretty a constant thing (laughs) so (laughs) thankfully they don't um there's enough time in between that they can get um the same vein all the time so um in that aspect i guess i'm lucky but yeah they we had to keep uh, switching arms and um at one point it had to go uh, on my shorter chemo days, we would go through my hand just because it was easier. Um, and my longer days would be in my arm, um, towards the end, like the last couple, let maybe last three sessions of chemo. Um, they had to use, um, a vein finder, which was almost like, like an infrared, uh, uh, almost like an infrared projector uh, or overhead projector to like find a vein. And it was pretty cool, but <laughs> it sucked that they had to use it, but they did find a vein using that. And um, yeah, all the nurses were really patient with me towards the end um, yeah. of treatment because it was getting very difficult. So just stay hydrated. Don't drink coffee, anything to help 
at least a little bit with the veins, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, my, my doctor says, like, I remember when uh, it uh, chemo just ended, and they were having trouble finding a vein. Um, It's like, now I just have to like, have a disclaimer to like the whoever the technician is just be like um i had chemo done two years ago so if you can find a vein in this arm great if not it's usually the other arm that'll work yeah, um, go along a little bit right yeah, yeah pretty much so usually when i tell them that and they see how young i am they're just like all right well they're a little bit more careful as not to like poking around as much mm-hmm. um but yeah water definitely helps if not water, Gatorade, if, as long as they're not checking your sugar. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. But anything that'll help um, hydrate yeah. um, is definitely key. Okay, good. Um, good to know. And, and so at the end of all the chemo, I mean, and the numbers looked great. Was there a moment, like, I know some people ring a bell, some people just get told like you're in remission or there's no evidence of disease. Did you have that conversation with your doctor? And can you recall, describe that moment for you? I did. Um, that was my last chemo session. Oddly enough, was right before, the day before uh, my cousin's birthday. So it was June 21st of 2018 was my last session. And I remember seeing my doctor um, a week after that, I think. Um, he said, your blood work is looking great. He goes, you, he goes, I, I knew it was my last session, but I didn't get to ring a bell or anything like that, which is fine. Cause it was, you know, it was, it was almost like a factory that, uh, uh, that I was in, but with people in and out all the time, but that was fine. Um, but my next appointment with my doctor for the follow-up, he goes, your blood work looks amazing. He goes, there's no sign of anything that was there before he goes your blood levels are normal he goes you he goes I can't officially put you in remission because we'd have to do another bone marrow biopsy he goes and I don't want to put you through that again he goes so officially unofficially you're in remission (laughs) (laughs) nice so so that was good um we were really happy about that so other than that like that I didn't get, unfortunately, I didn't get to ring a bell, but that was fine. Just taking yeah. a picture with that, just culminating everything was mm. the best. Getting just to hear that, right? Even if it was unofficial yeah. or whatever. I mean, that, yeah. it's like, okay, this this worked and now I can yeah. move on, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know your follow-up has been, the first year was every three months and then it was every four months and then mm. the third year was every six months. Um, and, and those follow-ups, was it just seeing your hematologist and getting a blood work done? Yeah. Yeah. I now pretty, it's every six, now it's every six months. So I next see him in, uh, in June. Um, basically I just get blood work done the week that I see him. Um, usually it gets done like a couple days before I see him. And then by the time I see him, he has the results of my blood work and we just talk about it. And that's pretty much it. Like we just touch base, you know, personally, and then, like let him know what's happening in, in my life. And he asks how my family's doing, how my husband's doing and yeah. just pretty much it. And then he's like, all right, see you in six months. <laughs> Later, it's great when it's uneventful, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, you know, wrapping up this part, usually we, we talk about all the different sort of quality of life issues in the third, but the third segment we're going to dedicate to your fertility journey. And so um, I just have a couple questions here being one being, was it, hard at any point like did you need help mentally getting through chemotherapy or just the fact that you know you had the six months and then it was five months and then four months like just for people who have this on the horizon any any tips for them on how to mentally and emotionally get through it yeah it was just basically a countdown for like treatment like you know the first one came and it's just like okay only five more and then only four more, only three more. So like when the last one happened, it was just like, this is great. I don't have to be here anymore. I was like, I hope I don't have to be here anymore. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. Um, so it was, it was, it was nice. It was really nice to like knowing that there was only X amount left. Mm-hmm. And like when, 
when he, when my doctor said, okay, we're done. You don't have to do like, you know, you don't have to go through chemo anymore. Like everything worked. It's just like, really? Like, are, are you sure? Cause it's like, you don't hear that story all the time. You hear, oh, we have to check you again. And oh, it's back. But it wasn't like that for me. So I was just like, okay, okay, well, we're taking this as a win, like a huge win. Like, let's, let's go. <laughs> let's keep it rolling. Yeah. yeah. The right direction. Yeah, yeah. On that note too, um, was there any support in particular that you found more helpful during this time from friends and family? Um, you know, just, yeah, any sort of advice there for people and how to help uh, someone going through cancer treatment? Um... It wasn't so much advice that my family was giving me. It was more just like words of encouragement. Like they would check in on me every now and again, even when I wasn't having treatment, they would just check in on me, send me a text. Hey, how you doing? Or how you feeling? Um, other than that, it was fine. Or the, they'd just be like, oh, you know, are you out of work? Did you, you know, can do you, I just want to check in on you and see if you're all right. And I was like, yeah, you know, I, I, there'd be times where just be like, oh yeah, I just got out of the gym. And they'll be like, what? I'll be like, yeah, I just got out of the gym. And they're like, you're going through treatment. You're going through chemo and you still have time to go to the gym. And I'm like, yeah, I, I feel fine. I was like, other than, you know, the two days of chemo and that weekend, I, yeah, I feel like crap sometimes, but you know, other than that, I feel good. And they're just like, you're, you're amazing. Like you, you this is just um, like, n this isn't something that comes out of people's mouths that go through chemo yeah. is that yeah, making so you. Yeah. yeah. Um, my last question, uh, Kimberly, is this picture, it was after uh, you were, went through everything. Um, and so sometimes people talk about, you know, survivorship, just the fact yeah. that because you've been diagnosed once, sometimes it pops up again. I mean, has that been your experience in terms of worrying about cancer or is it like, no, ever since then, you've just been looking forward? It's a little bit of both um, because we know I'm not gonna be 100% cured of this thing. It's always gonna be inside of me. And it's just a matter of when it decides to wake up again. Um, I remember telling my niece and nephew uh, when I was in remission that I told them, I was like, I'm in remission. And they're like, what does that mean? And I was like, well, I go, it means that the cancer's still inside. I go, it's just sleeping. And then they're just like, okay. They're like, but you're all right though. Right. I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay. So they're like, and so I described it to my husband because he wasn't home at the time when I told them. And he goes, he goes, yeah, that's a good way to put it. He goes, we know it's there. We know it's always going to be there. He goes, it's just a matter of when it decides to do its thing again, if it'll ever do its thing again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's always back in my mind that Yes, I'm cancer free, but at the same time, I'm free. But it's ever going to come back? Will it come back? Um, but I, we don't dwell on it. It's always just like, yeah, everything's good. Checkups are good. Blood work is good. Just keep chugging on. I was like, that's all you can do. You can't be afraid of what might happen later down the line because it'll just drag you down. Yeah, just living in the in the present, in the moment. That's definitely something cancer. Yeah kind of make us do, right? Um, well, thank you for sharing all of yeah. that, um, Kimberly. And um, I'm really excited next because like you said, you're 32 weeks pregnant. You've got a great story there. So hang tight because we're gonna talk about uh, Kimberly's fertility um, preservation and um, the whole journey to getting pregnant next. So stay with us.